Hello, folks. Again, this is Bill Weld. I'm trying to give you all an update here. It's been a rough week. I've been really sick. I've been having a lot of trouble with my kidneys and some other health issues. So it's been a rough week. That's not the only reason it's been a rough week, folks. As my son, uh, Bill Jr., said last night, he's on the radio. He's on a radio program called Warrior, the Warrior Form or something. I don't know exactly. He'll have to give me that information. We'll put it up in the video. But he's on the radio and he's talking about my health issues and how I haven't been able to give an update as I promised and how I, I'm not revealing enough information. Well, folks, when your family's been threatened, when you don't feel safe, and when you feel like your family's in danger, you don't understand, I think, as to why I've been holding things a little close to the vest here. That's about to change in a few minutes, folks, because I was told something from one of my sources last week. He's a very, very good friend of mine. I've known him for a good number of years. Met him at a charity golf tournament in South Carolina about 15 years ago. He has always been reliable. He has always told me the truth. And last Tuesday I spoke with him and he told me something that is just absolutely terrifying. It put me into a depression. It made me absolutely sick to my stomach as he described to me a very, very highly classified government project that is ongoing and that affects every man, woman, and child in this country. I had a very hard time dealing with it. But I'm dealing with it because people need to know what is going on. He also sent me some documents, he faxed them to me, that verify everything he said. These documents are classified material. There are some white papers from the Department of Defense, from the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, known as DARPA, also from Naval Intelligence. There's also a document from the CIA. And I've looked over them, and I've, I've, I've familiarized myself with them very, very carefully over the past few days while I've been trying to recover while I've been in bed. And we're going to, I've talked to Bill Jr., my son, about this, and I've talked to my wife. I also talked to my two daughters about it. They all feel that this information needs to be released to the public. And what what that information is, is this. In 1995, our government commissioned a project to place into the public water supply, into the, into the public food distribution system, a, a very small device, a, a nano-sized device with a microprocessor. It is an electronic device and it is about the size of one or two grains of sand. It, it, it took years to develop but they developed it, they perfected the technology, they tested it and as of today according to their estimates 85 percent of the population has one of these devices inside of their bodies. Now these, you could say you're infected in other words. You have been infected with one of these devices. They're incredibly small, they can barely be seen with the naked eye, they have to be removed from the medium that they are 
suspend it in. It could be food, it could be water, but if you take it out and if you put it on a table, preferably a, a black surface, and you look at it, it, it you're going to be able to see it. It's very hard, it's opaque, but let me put it this way, you'd never know it was there. If you've consumed it, which you probably have, as I said, 87% of the population has one of these in their bodies, right, as presently. As, as the military has estimated. <sighs> okay, so what is it? Why did the military develop this device and put it in the water supply and try to basically infect the entire U.S. population with it? Well, it's a very simple device, folks. It is designed to kill you. It is designed to terminate you. That's what it does. It's very simple. It doesn't really do anything else. Now, how does it kill you? Well, I don't fully understand it, but I have some understanding. And much of what I understand is not in the documents that was revealed to me, that were sent to us. It was, however, imparted to me by my source. And again, my source is someone I trust very much. He's a very high level position within the Department of Defense. He's had a 30 year career with our military and the armed forces. He described to me in detail how it works. And it goes something like this. It is again the size of a grain of sand or so, a little bit bigger. It is a nano device that contains a microprocessor, contains a receiver, and it, rec it can receive a uh, transmission, radio transmission. Once it receives this radio transmission, which is very specific, and can all it's it's something. It's a let me put it this way: it is a frequency that is our only our military uses and only knows about. It's not going to just be randomly activated while you're walking down the street. Uh, so it's activated by this signal. Now how do they do it? Well, their cell towers cover 98% of this country in terms of coverage. Cell towers, radio towers. In addition to that, our military has uh, spent about five years setting up a proprietary system, excuse me, that of coverage not in addition to the cell towers. So what they've done in any large population center, they have installed transmitters, uh, very small, and they're in strategic locations. They cover every block of every large city and even small cities. And this has been set up over the past five years. And the reason they want to do that is they want to be able to target these populations very specifically in a very small locality. OK? Now what do these devices do? Okay, they kill you. How do they do it? I don't know fully, but what they do is it, it induces flu-like symptoms in the body. It causes the body to release antibodies that, in addition to causing flu-like symptoms, it will cause your body to produce antibodies that are uh, indicative of a flu uh, virus infection. You will die within 10 to 12 days. The effectiveness is what they call it in their documents is 98 percent. That means 98 percent of people with which this device is implanted or uh, they are infected with this device once it is activated with the radio signal, 98% of people are dead within 10 to 12 days. 2% recover. And the recovery reasons are not fully known. It is uh, often outside influences. It could be uh, a malfunction of the device. Right now, our military wants to get it to 99%. It's at 98 right now. Basically, if this device has been activated in a population area, let's say 
they use a cell tower to send a signal out. You're going to see everybody around you, including yourself, sick with a very severe case of what appears to be the flu. You will go to the doctor, they won't be able to help you, it will continue to get progressively worse. Your, your lungs are going to fill up with fluid. In fact, that's going to be a symptom that will be very pronounced in all of these cases, and there's a reason for that. That is because the device it enters the brain and it activates certain autoimmune responses that are indicative of a severe case of the flu. And this response is sort of like a runaway nuclear chain reaction, in other words. It causes your body to just absolutely melt down. So, again, it's very effective. It has been shown to work in 98% of the cases. And most of the time, it just looks like a very bad case of the flu. I've been talking a long time, folks. I'm really getting worn out. I'm going to take a brief break here. I'll be right back. I'm going to finish this up. This has to get out. People have to know. I'll be honest with you, I was out of commission for about four or five days there. So sick with this information. Terrified for my family. But my family has convinced me, and I'm convinced that I have to get this information out. And my source in Washington, D.C., he is also very supportive of this. He wants the information out. So that's exactly what I'm doing, and I need this to go viral. I need people to get this and spread this around. I, honestly, it's for selfish reasons, for the safety of my family. Because what I'm revealing here is classified. It is highly classified. It is top secret. I'm certain that I'm violating certain national security laws by even revealing this, the documents I have in my possession uh, are a violation, I'm sure, of national security law. Now, obviously, I've made copies of these documents. I've got them placed in, a, in a, a very secure locations, and I've sent them to very trusted individuals. So on that end, uh, the documents are going to get out no matter what happens to me. If anybody hurts my family, these documents will be immediately released. We are in the process right now of organizing them, getting them uploaded. I'm going to put them into what's called a PDF file. What my son said is the best mode and medium of transport on the Internet. So I'll be... I've got to take a break, folks. I will be right back, though. Continue with this. I'm back, folks. Uh, a couple things I wanted to address before I go. Again, with this information, it's of the highest order of urgency. I hope you share it with family and friends. I hope. I'm going to be releasing these documents in two weeks. Uh, my source has instructed me to do it in two weeks. He is in the process of retiring. He is also in the process of leaving the country. And he, for his safety, he would like me to hold on to the documents for about two weeks until he gives me the go-ahead he leaves the country. Because he is certain that he will be killed uh, if the documents come out. He feels they already know who he is, or at least they're getting close. So he is making arrangements for his own safety, and I respect that. But I've got the documents, and I've spread it around to friends. And it's no matter what happens to us, it's going to come out. Another thing my source said is he said, Bill, if you go ahead with this, you're going to be attacked from every angle. They're going to try to discredit you. They're going to try to say you're not a doctor. They're going to try to say you're not a lawyer. They're going to try to tear you down, destroy your reputation. They're going to, they're, they're going to do everything they can to, to get this uh, 
I guess, discredit you in the eyes of the public. And they're doing that. They're doing that as we speak. I've had a few friends of mine say that my yellow pages listing for my law office is gone. And I went and searched for it, and I couldn't find it either. It was there about three weeks ago. Uh, I've contacted the company that I paid to have that information I submit it every year. It's in the yellow pages every year. So I've contacted them. I want to know what's going on. I've also had a few people have some questions about my internet skills or ability. I don't really understand why this is an issue. I'm 72. I've had kidney problems for the past two years. I don't have time to learn how to use the internet. So I don't, I don't even know how to use a computer very well. Uh, I do have some websites. Obviously, I talked about that in my first video. I put up quite extensively. But it just doesn't seem that the question has been answered well enough. Uh, I don't make those websites. I don't even know how to make a website. I wouldn't know the first thing about it. i got a webmaster, and I've got a few other people in my office to take care of it. They handle all that. Uh, my son helps me upload these YouTube videos. He has to come. Oh, he comes over almost every day to check on me anyway. But I can't put a YouTube video up unless he's here and he helps me do it. Uh, I've had just people that are saying really terrible things about me. They're attacking me. It's just vicious. I've never experienced this. I'm a lawyer. I'm used to this stuff. But not on this level of it. It's just what I was told from my source is just simply this. They're what are called shills. Shills are these paid vermin that are paid by our government. Could be the NSA, it could be the CIA, it could be the Obama administration for all we know. It could be any anybody who wants to push an agenda. So these people will just come out of the woodwork and they will attack whistleblowers like myself and they will just rip us apart and they'll post things on the internet and they'll, they'll leave comments and they'll, they'll just relentless and they try to discredit you. So I've been told that's what's going on and I believe it because I've seen it. And there, these people are just vermin. They are just the lowest of the low. And they're crawling out from their rocks to attack me and come after me. And they're, they're saying stuff like, why aren't you on the internet more? I don't have a website for my law practice. I've never had a website for my law practice. I don't do that. I've, I've always been in the yellow pages. We've always done advertising and local papers or publications. We even had a few billboards up in Los Angeles last year. That's always been very effective. We got more work than we need. So I don't have a website. I don't have any. I haven't been on the internet my entire life up until the past few months. My son helped me learn how to use the internet. So I just felt I need to address that. It, it's really concerning me because I'm in the possession of classified documents. I, I've come across information here from my sources so important people have to know about this they have to hear about this and we've got to figure out a way to fight it because this stuff's been put in the water supply it's in our bodies and they can activate it anytime with a drone with with a radio signal with cell towers they can activate it and they can kill an entire city. They could kill an entire town. They could kill a few people in an apartment complex with this flu outbreak. You won't even really be suspicious of it. It'll just be a severe flu outbreak. <sighs> I'm going to get going here. I'm absolutely exhausted. I've got to lay down. I may come back later to say a few more words because this is so important. Now I'm going to end this. I'm going to get my son over here and try to get this up tonight.
God bless.